Hello, in this Android emulator video, I'm going to show you how to set up EPSX E so you can play PlayStation 1 games. So, I've done a video for this in the past, but things have changed slightly, and I've, I've had a few people comment that they would like an updated version. So, this is as of early 2022. So, if you're having any troubles with the older videos out there, this should help. So, first of all, let's go to the Play Store, search for EPA. SXE, go to EPSXE for Android, click install. I've already got installed, there's no install button. Next, I also recommend that you download Z Archiver, which helps in you know, extracting and managing files on your computer, I mean on your device. So I highly recommend that. That really helps. Just also want to say that this video is not condoning piracy, it is for legal purposes only. And I recommend that you own the game that you, you know, are going to play and have a PS1 as well for legal purposes. So now I'm going to show you where to get the PS1 BIOS. So PS1 BIOS, just Google, you know, Google PS1 BIOS, go to HexROM. I'll provide a link to this in the description. Click download, click download, and click download. Should already. Uh, let me just click that again. Download again because I've already actually got it. Okay, so that's fine. And now, if you go to vim.net, and you'll look like this. And this is where you can get ROMs from. Again, this is for educational purposes, and I recommend that you actually own the games. But go to the vault. This is like virus free, works really well. Go to PlayStation. And you can download your game right here. Let's say if you selected, you know, Crash Bandicoot Warped, for example, you just click download. It literally starts downloading, and that's that's it. And click, I'll click cancel because I've already got, you know, games. And now, and let's set things up. So first of all, we're gonna go to Z Archiver, go to download, and we have the BIOS. Open that, and the BIOS is right here. So I will select that, keep it, your finger pressed on it. I will copy it, and I'll go back. I've got a folder called Games, and I've got a BIOS here. Paste it here, and my BIOS has been pasted. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, for if you had a game, you could just extract it in a similar way. Just open it and extract it. I've already got the games right here. So here we go. So let's open this up. Let's open up EPSXE. And this is what the menu will look like. And go to Preferences. In BIOS Preferences, select your file. So for me, it's Games, BIOS, select the BIOS. And you can do a simulated BIOS, but we've actually got a BIOS file. We can show the boot PSX logo, which is pretty cool. And in CPU Preferences, we can show FPS if we want to see how well it's running. Honestly, it's a pretty, you know, it's an emulator that's emulating an old console now. So a lot of devices should be okay to run this. And you can make sure for the PSX CPU clock, you set it to times one. I've seen sometimes it's set to one of the others. That can cause issues. And that's really the main thing we'll deal with here. In screen preferences, landscape mode. And you can change the screen ratio, but 4x3 was the original one. And again, there are stuff like VR options and whatnot. Feel free to take a look at these. And if you go to video preferences, you can change your renderer from hardware to like OGL, which is like an OpenGL version, which is still hardware technically. The only one you don't want is software. Any other one should be fine. I'll stick with hardware. If you want the OpenGL plugin one, you will need... There is, if you search for EPSXE, you'll need this for it. So feel free to check that out. But I find hardware works fine for me. I recommend that you lower down the internal resolution just initially so you can actually see, you know, if it runs, if it runs well, increase, increase it. And, you know, feel free to, you know, you know, activate the threading mode, which is experimental right now but it can you know, be faster if you have a more powerful system. And if you want to change some of these settings, feel free to, but most of them I recommend that you leave as is. Sound preferences, again, this is something you probably won't mess around with. 
but you can do if you want to input preferences you can choose how many players you're going to have so if you like multi-tap you could have you know three four players on certain games and let's say if we go to player one and you can change it to digital only dualshock namco justifier mouse or disconnected and i want here digital only and for the gamepad you could select okay virtual gamepad or you can select none or if you have a if you actually have a controller connected you can enable vibration mode you can map the button so if i was to connect a controller i could map that button i'll have a separate video covering that you can do an auto fire as well which is pretty cool and you can configure the on-screen buttons feel free to have a look at this and there's accelerometer options as well which is pretty cool there you can change the mouse options gamepad input methods as well and in mem card preferences just make sure shared by all games make sure you have just a default for both of them and make sure you've enabled all mem cards as well and you can export them and the save states to dropbox if you want to pretty cool and in ui preferences this is generally going to leave as is unless you want it more specific to the way you like it and in miscellaneous you can auto save on exit which is pretty cool that way if you exit the emulator you'll auto save you might not want that but you can if you you know you're afraid that you might forget to auto save and we can leave that as is okay now if we run bios okay so that was the bios that we just ran i'm just going to quit that and quit game there we go if that works then you know the bios is working fine I'll just turn the volume down now. And in multiplayer, you can do some, you know, server client stuff as well. Let's run a game. And do, 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 do. Okay, my games are in games. PS1. And let's say if I choose, uh, I'll choose Tekken 3. And open up the bin file. So I'll just leave the volume off. So I've got on-screen touch, touch controls, which you can disable if you have a controller connected like a PS4 or an Xbox controller, which I highly recommend checking out and also, you know, disabling these controls if you do have that. And let's say if I go to arcade mode. Okay, just choose the first character and that's fine. And here we go. There, the CD is running nicely, smoothly, it's working great. So if I click back, let me pause it first. If I click... Whoop, back, you can... There's more options. There's you know, a variety of different options here. Plus, there's also... Keep triggering events. You can save state. So if I save a state, I click slot number one. And you can do cheat codes as well, which is pretty cool. You can download cheat codes, but oh, I'll leave that to you if you want that. You can toggle off frame limit, but if I quit the game, and if I run game now, and I run Tekken, uh, let's say if I was to reset game, it's loading from the start, but if let's say I go to load state, it continues where we left off. Let me try increasing the internal resolution now. Now that we got everything working, and let's have a look. I'll just have to quit out of here, quit the game. I'll go to preferences, video, internal resolution. Let's do four times. Let's try running the game now. As uh, you can see, it is running a lot better. So you just need to continue because of that preview. When you first, you know, have save state, if you pause, it will not update because obviously it'll be a still image.
but I think the er, the edges are looking a lot smoother, and it still runs very smooth. I'm using a Galaxy Fold 3, if you are wondering, so it shouldn't really have much issues in terms of performance and increasing the internal resolution. If you have a slightly older device, a lower power device, you might need to stick with just one times, and you might even need to change some of the other options, but you should be all good to go. I find some games still work pretty well with the on-screen touch controls, like Tekken, but some games I prefer a controller, so feel free to check that out. Especially if you have a case on your phone, with tablet that allows you to stand it up, be a nice way to play it when you're out and, out and about, especially when you're on like a train. But yeah, I'll just defeat King. There we go. Quit. Quick game. Okay, so that is it. That is how you set up EPSXE on Android in 2022. If you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord group. There's a link in the description. If you like the video, give it a like and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.